Good day everyone, I am Dr. Sasindar, consultant orthopedic and arthroscopy surgeon from Apollo Hospital Moscow. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about commonly used orthopedic instruments. Let us start with the very commonly used instruments. So the most commonly used is the forceps. Here we have tooth forceps and non-tooth forceps. They have long and short. Okay, the small or uh, small tooth forceps is others called arsen, uh, and small uh, non tooth forceps is also arsen forceps. The tooth forceps causes less damage to the tissue because it can easily pick up the tissue, whereas the non tooth forceps crush the tissue more. So it is used only when needed for very sensitive tissues like the nerve. When you don't want to actually hold it strong, but you just want to manipulate the nerve a bit. And coming on to the scissors, this is the male scissors and this is the Messenbaum scissors. Male scissors are slightly broad and flat. And this is a curved male scissors used for dissecting tissues with a blunt tip. These are Messenbaum scissors. They are narrow and long. This is a curved Messenbaum scissor. This is a straight Messenbaum scissor with blunt tip. And it's a curved medicine bomb scissor with a blunt tip, all are used for dissecting tissues. This is a suture cutting scissor. The shape is specifically made like this in order to pick up the suture under one of the blades and cut it. This is a sponge holding forceps, you know, to pick up a sponge and for preparing the area. These are mosquito forceps or small hemostats. This is straight small hemostat or straight mosquito and this is a curved mosquito or a straight curved small hemostat. This is a long artery forceps or a hemostat forceps. This is straight and this is curved. This is also a curved artery forceps. This is a long straight artery forceps. Okay and we will go on to the needle holders. This is a needle holder. If you see the difference between the straight artery and the needle holder, uh, the needle holder is more stout and more strong in order to be able to manipulate the needle into the tissues. This is a cocker. Cocker is for holding the tissues very strong and manipulating it. This is straight cocker and this is a curved Cocker. Okay, these are the alice forceps. In order to uh, take hold of tissue, usually a fascia or a tendon, it has serrated aid that uh, articulate with each other in order to hold the tissue strong. And uh, this is again a curved long cocker. This is a straight cocker. This is a barred park knife handle in order to fit knives of various shapes and sizes for the surgery. Here you have the Langenbach retractor. You have options of deep and small, broad and small. This is a bone nibbler. This single axis, this double action. This single action bone nibbler and double action bone nibbler. It's used for nibbling away pieces of bone. This is a bone cutter. See, if you see the bone nibbler uh, is shaped something like this, you have a scoop sort of uh, tip, whereas in a bone cutter, it's more flat and sharp. And this is a double action bone cutter. This is a curette. You have a rounded part and a more oval part. This is for curating away uh, infected uh, surfaces or uh, fracture surfaces, blood clots off. Fracture surfaces, or in case of non union, fibrous tissue from fracture surfaces. This is a bone lever, is used to um, move away the tissues from the bone. For example, uh, you have this at the bone, you just clip the bone lever after you make an incision on the periosteum and uh, elevate the periosteum with the periosteum elevator. You slip the bone lever under the periosteum and remove the tissues away from the bone. That way you can expose the bone and make sure that you don't have some 
made your vessels or no under the bone before you use a bone lever for example in an anterolateral approach of the humerus don't use a bone lever too deep you could damage the radial nerve this pointed bone holding clamp this pointed bone holding clamp big one and small one the difference between a tower clip and a pointed bone holding clamp is the bone holding clamp points towards each other whereas the tower clips point slightly away from each other in order to pinch the tower this is again a bone holding clamp this is a bird beak plate holding clamp it has two surfaces one surface allows the plate to be held against it's shaped in such a way that you can place the plate on the bone and hold the bone and the plate together after you have reduced the fracture before you place the screws this is a plate bender this is a plate yeah this is a plate bender so basically uh, you use the bender in two different directions like this in order to bend the plate in either direction okay so you have a more narrow slot for the 3.5 plates and more broader slot for the 4.5 plates okay so this is a sleeve when you use a drill bit on a bone and you are using a more minimally invasive approach you use a sleeve in order to protect the soft tissues from the drill bit okay so this is a the drill bit sleeve and this uh, universal sleeve used for both center central for making hole in the center of a dcp hole or in an eccentric way the arrow has to be pointing towards the fracture so that the drill hole is made away from the fracture in order to achieve compression at the fracture site okay so this is a depth gauge you have a small hook on the tip of the depth gauge you play, after making the drill hole you put the depth gauge through the drill hole hook it on the under surface of the bone and then push the upper part of the depth gauge and once it is done you have a measurement there and that is the length of the screw that you have to take okay so the hook on the tip of the depth gauge allows you to go through the drill hole and then hook on the under surface of the bone and then you push this part and make a measurement of the screw length this is cannulated t handle shaped screw driver this goes with a thin k wire this is a guide wire okay fine this is a this is a bone saw used along with the electric saw okay this is a periosteum elevator this is an osteotome these are all osteotomes this is a chisel and this is a chisel i will tell you the difference see first of all in the periosteum elevator you have a thumb rest okay so this is one way in which you can uh, identify which is a periosteum elevator and it is more curved so basically uh, once you have made an incision on the periosteum you just place on the incision and elevate inch by inch this is an osteotome it is beveled on both sides so this is a narrow osteotome this is a broad osteotome and this is a medium osteotome um it, it is used for cutting bones this is a chisel it is beveled on one side but not beveled on the other side this is a straight chisel and this is a curved chisel it is used for taking off um growths from the surface of a bone or for example you have done a plate removal and you have extra bone then you chisel off the extra bone from the surface of the bone it is not used for cutting bone osteotome is used for cutting bone so you have the drill bits here of various length and size 
what I mean by size is uh, the thickness of the drill bit. So for example, for a 3.5 system, you use a 2.5 millimeter drill bit or a 2.7 millimeter drill bit. And for a 4.5 system, you use a 3.5 millimeter drill bit. And here you have cables of various thickness. We have in 1 mm, 1.2, 1.5, 2 mm cables. This, this is a, a combi hole plate. You have, you have dynamic compression holes and also you have locking holes. The locking hole, the inner part has threads that locks the locking screw head to the locking hole threads. So once you have drilled the bone and you have made a assessment of the depth of the drill with the depth gauge, then you go in with the tap in order to create the threads before you insert the screw. This is not needed for a self tapping screw. However, if the bone is very strong, then you have to at least make an entry hole with a tap so that it becomes easy for you to push in the screw. And this is a regular screwdriver like previously I showed a cannulated screwdriver. And then here you have the self retaining forceps um, in order to push away the soft tissue especially when you are short of an assistant or when you have a minimally invasive procedure when you want to push away the tissues and uh, do your procedure with minimally invasive incision for example uh, you're doing a mini open rotator cuff repair you want to make an incision in the deltoid and push away the deltoid fibers and go inside and expose the rotator cuff that has been a self-retaining forceps is very useful and here you have the mallet it's useful for most orthopedic procedure one small tip with the mallet is never make um, I mean this is not an instrument for the mallet but I will just show never make single taps uncontrolled taps it's it's easier and more controlled to make double taps in a controlled way and one particular point i would like to make here is the way to hold a forceps is to have your ring finger in one of the ears and the thumb in the other ear and have the remaining two fingers supporting the artery or needle holder that way you have very good control of the instrument it's this is not the way to hold the instrument and this is not a good way to hold the instrument. Have the ring finger in one of the ear and thumb in the other and have it supported with the other fingers. Okay, thank you.